Hello everybody on our online platform, Karibu Sana to Renewal Church Online. We are super excited. Guys, you won't believe it. We are here at, at, at our new space. God has been so faithful and I can't even explain to you guys the miracles, uh, the wonderful things that we have seen on this journey. So guys, we're so glad that you could join us for this service. Today, the first time that we're meeting in this space, this home that God has blessed us with, we are super, super excited. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time, please remember to subscribe to our channel and press that notification bell right there so that you know every time we upload a new service. Guys, we have Chris who's going to be speaking to us later today, but I'd like to invite you guys to celebrate with us what God has done. We're super excited excited and I pray that you'll be blessed as you uh, you know stick around and be a part of this service wherever you are so karibu sana we're going to spend some time in worship but before we do that shall we pray Lord thank you for bringing each and every person who's online right now this person who's watching um, from different parts of the world from different parts of Kenya Lord, I pray that you bless them, speak to them. Let them feel your love and your presence as they watch this online service. We're so grateful for everything that you have done. For these grounds that, we're, that, that I'm standing on even right now, it's just testament of the things that you have done. And we say to you, be all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, let's worship. Jesus shed health. We in the body of Christ, one in the body of Christ. To inspire community, cause we the salt of the earth. From Karen in Nairobi, New Wine, Holy Ghost party, reflecting His glory. Cause everybody, somebody, from physical to this. Yeah, when we meet, we eat from chapati to veggie sandwiches. Yeah, throw your hands in the air and while you're at it, say a prayer. Put on a big smile and let your neighbor so you care. Throw your hands in the air and while you're at it, say a prayer. Put on a big smile and let your neighbor know you care. We knew a church. Yeah. Grow like him. We wanna know Jesus. Do 
Say hello to somebody if you can. Wave at somebody if you can. And grab a watermelon in your hand. Smile to somebody if you can. Come on, say hello to somebody if you can. Wave somebody if you can. And grab a watermelon. And grab a watermelon. One more time, one more time. Smile to somebody if you can. Say hello to somebody if you can. Wave somebody if you can. Grab a watermelon. Grab a watermelon. You can eat it. Smile to somebody if you can. Say hello to somebody if you can. Wave somebody if you can. And grab a watermelon in your hand. Put it down. Hey everybody, so nice to see you. So glad you're here. Oh 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 oh. Hey everybody, so nice to see you. So glad you're here. Oh 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 oh. We wanna know. We wanna know Jesus. We wanna grow like Him. We wanna know Jesus into the things that He did. We wanna know. We wanna know Jesus. We wanna grow like Him. We wanna know Jesus into the things that He did. Make some noise. God, we thank you because you are not like man that you should lie. Your promises remain. Your promises are true. And this morning, we just want to lift up our worship and our praise to you. The author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and Omega. Thank you, Jesus. God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word. It will come to pass. Let's sing it out. Great is your faithfulness to me. Yes, Lord. Great is your faithfulness to From the rising, from the rising sun to the setting. Oh, great. 
us to just take a moment and just reflect on God's faithfulness in your life. Just give him your worship, your gratitude. Feel free to lift up your voice, lift up your hands in his presence. You've always been there closer than a brother you never leave me or forsake me no You're always faithful to your word God never disappoint yeah. You're always faithful and true the rock of my salvation you're the one that I can run to you're always on time yeah you're always on time oh you always love me no matter what I've done always accept me yeah open wide Oh, your arms are open wide And you call me your own Oh, yes, you call me your own You make me a part of your family Yes, you make me your own Sing great is your faithfulness is your faithfulness to me.
explodes its praise to you. Now and forever my heart bows in worship to you, my King and my God. Every day I will lift up my praise to your name with praises that will last throughout eternity. Lord, you are great and worthy of the highest praise. For there is no end to the discovery of the greatness that surrounds you. Generation after generation will declare more of your greatness and declare more of your glory. Your magnificent splendor and the miracles of your majesty are my constant meditation. Your awe-inspiring acts of power have everyone talking. I'm telling people everywhere about your excellent greatness. Our hearts bubble over as we celebrate the fame of your marvelous beauty, bringing bliss to our hearts. 
we shout with ecstatic joy over your breakthrough for us. And so, Lord, this morning as we worship you, we just continue to celebrate your goodness. We celebrate your faithfulness. We thank you because we are standing here in this place, on this day and in this time, only because of you. So, Father, may you be glorified this day. May we look around and see evidence of your goodness and your faithfulness. As we look around this space, as we look around this room, as we look at each other. May our hearts receive you today. May we hear from you. May we praise you. Be glorified this day, this moment, O oh God, because you are magnificent. You are amazing. You are majestic. You're a sovereign God who reigns over all. So receive our praise. Receive our praise, Lord. Receive our praise. You are our God and we worship you. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you've got a Bible with you, I'd love you to turn to uh, Esther, the book of Esther, chapter, chapter 9. If you don't know where Esther is, it's about, I don't know, about a dozen books into the Bible. It's one of the kind of history uh, books of the Old Testament that shares the story uh, of, of, the, of the Israelites. Chi-Chi, come on the front. Yes. Finally, someone's made it to the front. Someone's... Yeah. Uh, uh. But guys, before we get into this, I just want to take uh, a moment to thank some, some people. Um, so if you are... If you're on team, guys, if you're on team here, if you're on staff... We just stand up a minute. So Chiquaza, Christian, Jemmy, Adrian, Faith. Can we just put our hands together for these guys? Like So like I, I don't like WhatsApp at the best of times, but I've been getting messages at like two in the morning saying, guys, the lights are working. I'm like, what are you doing there at two in the morning? Um, we had such a tight turnaround uh, on, on things that were happening on site. So guys, can we just, um, just if you, if you see our team later today, can we just thank them? Is that all right? Um, one of the thing as well, guys, so we do, we do this thing, we, we call it humble leadership in our church, where, you know, we just lead, and if people see it, it doesn't, like, or not, it doesn't matter. So humble leadership's really important, but there are also moments where you honor what people have done, right? And I think that's really important. So guys, if you were here on any of the kind of work party days that we've done, you helped out, can you just stand up? Like, we want to honor all those people who helped out, so stand up. If you don't stand up, I'll just tell you to stand up, so just might as well stand up. Brenda, Camara, Lucy, guys, everyone just stand up. We want to just put our hands together for all those who help. Thank you, guys. Like, this wouldn't be looking what it, like, we... So just so you know, just to get the floor to the status in today, took a team of about 20 people headed by Eunice over the weekend. Uh, Eunice, have you recovered? I am broken. Eunice is broken, okay. We swept this floor, we swept it, we put water down, soap down, people down, yeah, everything to try and clear this floor. So um, guys, thank you so much for making that happen. Uh, we have our kind of, you know, senior leadership team on the staff, so Faith, Adrian, and myself. Our WhatsApp group has gone crazy over the last few weeks. I think, I think we might have exchanged about a thousand messages a day going, 
what color is this meant to be? Have we measured this? Faith, how many times have you and I walked around and measured out kids' spaces or church spaces? So if you don't know, Faith is quite good with a mallet. So she's been whacking in poles to measure out where the kids' spaces go and stuff. And um, the stuff that has happened just to, to make today ready uh, has been phenomenal. So guys, thank you so much from me. I really appreciate uh, all of that. We, we're not there, as you might have seen. There's some rough edges. But over the next few weeks, things will continue to just... Uh, happen around you and you'll see and if you notice things that uh, are missing or not happening um, just chat to us they're probably on our radar but we might have missed them so come and and talk to us and we're so grateful to all our contractors and the people who've come in uh, and made things happen and to you guys who gave us your your resources but also your contacts and you know making uh, making us aware of things that we needed to get done we really appreciate so guys, bear with us if things aren't quite ready, but we are, we are getting there. I just want to read this story uh, this morning from Esther chapter 9, verse 20. And it says this, Mordecai recorded these events and he sent letters to all the Jews throughout the provinces of King Xerxes far and near to have them celebrate annually the 14th and 15th day of the month of Adar as the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies, and as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy and their mourning into a day of celebration. He wrote them to observe the days as days of feasting and joy and giving presents of food to one another and gifts to the poor. So the Jews agreed to continue the celebration they had begun, doing what Mordecai had written to them. For Haman, some of Hamadatha, the Agai, and the enemy of all the Jews had plotted against the Jews to destroy them and had cast the poor for their ruin and destruction. But when the plot came to the king's attention, he issued written orders that the evil scheme Haman had devised against the Jews should come back onto his own head and that he and his sons would be impaled on poles. Because of everything written in this letter and because of what they'd seen and what happened to them, the Jews took it on themselves to establish the custom that they and their descendants and all who joined them should without fail observe these two days every year in the way prescribed and at the time appointed. These days should be remembered and observed in every generation, by every family, in every province and in every city. And these days of pure should never fail to be celebrated by the Jews nor should the memory of these days die out among their descendants. Lord God, as we gather and turn to your word, your living word for us, we pray you'd speak to us, you would open your heart to us, and we would have ears to hear what you're saying. Lord, that we would be moved by your spirit, moved in our actions to play our part in seeing your kingdom come here in Nairobi as it is in heaven. Amen. I want to start with a bit of a confession. I've had to kind of change my posture on the ways, on, on something that I've been thinking about. For a long time, you know, I would typically, and this is a bit of the way I'm wired, as you know me, kind of, I can be one of those, I think the glass might be half full some of the times. And I've been looking at things and going, God, where are you? Or God, what's going on here? And as we've looked at things saying, God, do you, do you not care? Do you not care about these things? And as we look at some of the things that go on in our, our world, some of the situations we find ourselves in, some of the situations we see our friends in and our family and the people in our city. It can be easy to think that these are the conclusions we must draw, going, God, where are you? But I'm not sure this makes sense of the God we worship. If we're not careful, we either make God out to be kind of indifferent or we make him out to be like asleep at the wheel or perhaps even malicious. But I wonder if we miss something. God may not be doing what I think he should be, or what perhaps we want him to be, but I still want to have the courage to believe you're a good God, a faithful God, a loving and a just God. 
So rather than simply believing God's gone missing, my confession is that I've changed to thinking, God, I want to know what you're doing. God, I want to know what you're doing, what you're up to. Uh, This book of Esther, for those of you who've read it before, it's a really curious book. Uh, Historically, there's been disagreements about uh, this book, major stumbling blocks over its authenticity. But I think in the midst of that is this question of God, where are you? Uh, in other books that written similarly, like Nehemiah, for instance, was written from Jerusalem, from the heart of, of Yahweh and all the things he was doing. And we read on every page almost, God, we turn to you. God, we thank you for this. God, we've seen what you've done. But this book was written in a completely different place, away from the heart of, of what Yahweh was doing in a foreign land. And God's not mentioned. Throughout the entirety of this book, we don't see God mentioned at all. And for many people, this has been a real issue. But as I look at it, I think it's a real clever uh, device, like literary device, that allows us not to simply read that God was there, but to search for what God is doing there. To delve into this story and to see God for ourselves. We're not being told what God's doing, but we're being asked to see it, to search for it. And I think we need something more powerful than religious language to draw people in. This is a story. And in essence, we don't need to know that God has done it. If we, if we see the story, it's obvious that only God could have done this. And as we look around today, and as we talk to one another, I think the most obvious thing is, well, it must have been God that made this happen. Because there's no way we could have done this on our own. Faith and Fagana were looking at another property just down the road. And uh, and Fagana randomly drove down this road and into this plot. And got Faith to come and look at it and the team. And they said, Chris, you've got to come and see this plot. And being a real man of faith, I said, I don't think so. I'm not sure I have the energy for that. I've been to see every plot available in Karen. I'm not sure I want to see another empty garden. They convinced me to come. And I walked onto the site. And the guy showing us around looks at me. And I looked at him and we, we went, hang on, I know you. I said, I think you've lost hair. He said, I think you've lost hair. So the family who own this property, their son was my tutee when I was uh, at St. Andrew's Turi. And this was a family we had so many connections with. And, you know, we've been talking to people about a space for years. And every time that we've been getting close to maybe having a deal to have a place. We've gone, so we run this church, and they've gone, a church? I wouldn't, we don't want a church. And every time you mention the word church, they go, ah, oh, you guys won't be good tenants. You guys will be noisy. We can't trust you. I remember meeting with the Ghana and the family, and we talked about us wanting to run a church on this site, and they said, the thing that clinched this deal for us was the fact you were a church. That this would be a space that would be used for God was the thing that clinched it for us. And as we tell this story, we can just see that this was God's hand. That it could only have been God that made this happen. You know, we've been asking God, say, God, we, we would think this space might be a good idea for church as we've looked at other spaces over the years and we said, God, make it obvious if you don't want us to be here. And some of them got bulldozed down and some of them got like knocked and knocked over. We're like, okay, God, we'll take that as a sign. But God, we see you up to it. We see you up to something. And then this, what is the season we find ourselves in? And what might God be up to in it? This is more than simply seeing God in the story. We're allowed to see ourselves in that story Two. This is more than simply looking for what God has done. It also allows us to see ourselves in the story. It allows us to believe something of what God might want to do in our time. As we look at this story, this is a people whose biggest struggle and fear and hopes and aspirations were answered by God. 
And we're allowed by this book to bring our own struggles and our own seasons, our own times where we find ourselves and say, God, what do you want to do in our time? Historically, this book for the Jewish people, so the book of Esther, it stood on the fringes of their canon. It stood on the fringes of, of the Jewish understanding for many, many centuries, right up until the Holocaust. And in the moment of the Holocaust, they reread this book with fresh eyes and went, we can see ourselves in this story and we turn to you once again, God. In verse 24, it says that the moment they found themselves in facing destruction and genocide for their ruin. As we look at our own season, I don't think that physical destruction is what is facing our church, perhaps. But we are in a moment. We are at a moment for the church in our city. My, my personal opinion is that we stand at a really important crossroads for what Jesus might do in our time. Where historically the church has just kind of happened around us. But actually, people are beginning to say, well, I'm not sure I'm in for that anymore. And people are walking away from the church. We celebrated on Friday night the work of a jar. Incredible evening. It was so much fun. As we looked to raise some of the much needed funds to get innocent people out of prison. But as we celebrated that, we recognize the only reason that's happening is because there is a dark underbelly to our city. That this is the moment and the season that we, we live in. We've seen a generation of people leave the church, a crisis of faith. We see corruption, a loss of jobs, cost of living, impact on so many, people forced onto the streets and worse. And yet in the moment of crisis, this was an opportunity for God to move. What is that opportunity that God is inviting us into in this season? What might God want to do in our time as we offer this space to him? As we offer ourselves to him, what might he want to do in our time? I think the question is, dare we dream what God might want to do? As we look around today, do we have the courage to dream, to pray, to seek God, to seek God and ask him to act? This story recounts the act of a faithful people before God called to do extraordinary and daring things. If you read through this book, what Esther was called to do for God, because they believed that God wanted to do something in their time. The most iconic verse of this whole book is, who knows but that you were born for such a time as this. And I wonder, do we dare to dream that God might want to move in our time? Do we come with expectant hearts for what God might want to do. So as we wrap this up, I think it's really important to note what this chapter is about. The verses we read today say, we're going to mark this down. We're going to write this down. We're going to note that this has happened. In the story, they send out messages to tell the people, observe this, remember this. They establish customs to remember this point. And I think it's so important that we mark what's happened to see what God does. Because otherwise we forget. I was just flicking through some uh, books on my shelf. I came across a diary from the year we started this church. I was looking through the list of things that we were crying out to God for. And just seeing God, you met us in extraordinary ways. And that's why we're going to... Uh, gather today, we're going to have food, we're going to celebrate, we're going to have games and all kinds of things. Why? Because it's important that we mark this day. When Wilbur was about four, him and I, I was just tucking him into bed and we'd been praying and he said, he said, Papa, I, I, I don't know how to hear from God. And so I said, well, let's, let's pray about that, but let's pray that God will speak to you. 
I didn't, I, didn't know. I didn't have a theological treaty for how that was meant to happen for four-year-olds, but I thought we'd off, I just, let's pray about it. Uh, God, would you speak to Wilbur? Because I believe you want to speak to us. The next morning, he runs into my bedroom. He says this, Papa, I had a dream last night, and God told me two things. I said, wow, that's amazing. What did he tell you? Firstly, that you and I need to go out and jump in more puddles together. And second, that God loves you, Papa, and he wanted you to know that. I said, well, but that is just what I needed to hear this morning. He's seven. He turned seven today. But we remind him of that story. And it makes him think, yes, God does want to speak to me because he did it. And I believe he wants to speak again. And that's why we're, uh, you know, compelled to mark these things down, to note these things down, because it helps us remember that God will act again. As we mark down, we can look back and think, this is what God has done. But it's not just that this is a moment in history. The moments where God moves serves as fuel for the fire, for what he'll do in the future. This is not a day when we get a building. That's inconsequential. This is a day that we mark the beginning of where some of our lost friends will come and know Jesus. This is the next step on the path to sex workers finding hope and the unjustly imprisoned being set free. It's a piecing together of hope and justice and love and grace to a people who don't even know us yet. And their part of their story will be the fact that we faithfully gathered in this place to say we're going we're gonna to reach the loss of this city. Because God is on the move. When we began, this wasn't about us being a cool church. It was about us playing our part in what God might want to do in our time. And we remember. You know, when Daniel and I get a moment, we sit together. And, uh, and Adrian and Faith and others who've been here a long time, we sit together. and go, Do you remember when we met in the garden? Or do you remember when we, do you remember when we did pop-up church? Do you remember when we went online and we used to film and we remember those things and we remember the times we done because it's fuel for the fire and it encourages that God will move in our time. I got a message literally two days ago from someone who said this, I am about to become a father-in-law. I want to thank you as a church for the role you played in the healing journey of my future daughter-in-law. She's no longer part of our church. She's moved on. She's uh, moving the country. But what an incredible thing to say that we're part of something. That was our, that'll be our story in a few years' time. We'll look back at this moment and say, God moved. I, I, want, us, I want us to be able to come back and celebrate the stories. Going, Do you remember that person that was lost? They're now here, worshiping Jesus. What we mark we remember. And what we remember gives us cause for hope. What we mark, we remember. And what we remember gives us cause to hope. And then this. It's not just that we would mark it. We need to celebrate and we need to party. My friend Gavin here, was, uh, he was here last week from South Africa and he remarked that we'd become a quiet church. I'm not sure what you feel about that. I think we need to become a bit of a noisy church again, but we'll work on that. But we definitely, we definitely want to be the church that parties, right? Some of us have become like the frozen chosen. <laughs> We're so miserable and we walk into parties like this. We want to be the church that parties, I was there on Friday night at a jar and someone came up to me and said, I, I, I can't believe that you're a church and you're partying. I was like, Jesus went to parties? And they said, yeah, but he wouldn't here. Where have we got lost by the religion that we miss that we need to gather and to celebrate and to have fun because it's the way of Jesus. Have you noticed that when they write this down, what they didn't decide to do was to have a solemn moment to remember what had happened. They had a feast and they set aside two days to celebrate. 
And it's not just because it was an excuse to have a party, but rather it does something. Celebration lifts our eyes. Helps us remember that in tough times, God is on the move. And we gather around people who care and look out for us and encourage us. That we're surrounded by people who love us. But more than this, it was establishing a culture. If you read through what they decided to do, it established a culture of care for one another, to look after people, to feed them, and to give to people who needed it. By gathering, by being a people, we get to establish a culture and a rhythm and a posture for how we'll do life in our time. Guys, I want to get the, I want to get the band back up. Where are they? Can we get the musicians back up? Chikwaza, come and join us. But I also want to ask um, Adrian, Faith, our leaders, come up. We're going to spend just a moment of, of kind of commissioning. We're going to just mark this moment. We're going to mark with some food and games in a few minutes. But right now, we're just going to mark with a moment of, of prayer. And so guys, where we are, we're going to, in just a couple of minutes, we're going to ask you to just turn into small groups where you are and ask you to uh, just pray with us. And we're going to take just four different things. We're going to pray over different things. And we're just going to read a Bible verse and then ask you in your small groups just to pray for a couple of minutes. And then we'll do this. We just, we just want to mark this moment and cov- uncover it with prayer about what God is doing. Do we have any microphones? We do. Let me just, do you want to give this to these guys? So guys, will you stand with me? And just turn to like three, four, five, six people around you because we're just going to be praying in these groups. If you don't like the people you're with, now's the time to move. I can't believe they laughed at that. I say that every week. <laughs> Guys, just turn some people around. We're just going to pray in some groups. What we're going to do is just read out. I'm just going to read out some Bible verses. And then as we pause afterwards, we just pray over these things, okay? Okay, guys, let's, let's pray. Let's turn our hearts to God. So firstly, I just want to pray a prayer of expectation for what God might want to do in our time. Habakkuk 3 says this, Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds. Would you repeat them in our day? In our time, make them known. Lord, we come to ask you, do what only you can do. So guys, will you just pray expectation for what God might want to do in this place in your groups now? Just go for it.
And now we'll have a prayer of dedication from 1 Kings chapter 8. But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you, how much less this temple I have built. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Lord my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open towards this temple, night and day. This place of which you said, my name shall be there. So that you will hear the prayer your servant prays towards this place. And so Lord, this is your place. Would you use it to glorify your name? And so let's take the next couple of minutes to just dedicate this space, this whole ground to the Lord. So let's pray. Having dedicated this place to God, we're going to move on in our prayers to pray with thanksgiving. The psalmist said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. The Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. So Lord, receive our thankfulness for all you have done, all you are doing, and all you will do. And again in our groups, let's spend a, a minute or two expressing our thanks for all that God has done and all that God will be doing.
And now we're just going to go through the prayer of commission. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. For all that you have called us to, for every industry, every community, and every place represented, Lord, we ask for your strength to be, to be in all, with our people. So guys, let's just pray and commission this place uh, to God. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. If, you, if you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you. If you're part of another church, but you thought you'd just come along today to support us, we appreciate that. But go back and, and be part of your community and love that. And, and let's start doing this thing for the way of Jesus, because this isn't about this church winning. This is about the global church winning for the sake of Jesus, right? And guys, we just love having you here. We are gonna, we're gonna finish with some, um, we're gonna finish with some fun. I know you guys aren't in for fun, but it's okay. Just indulge me for a moment. Um, some of you I know are prepped. Some of you are prepped. Faith, are you ready? Okay. So guys, for those of you who are prepped with, with your instruments, Martha, do you want one of these? You're holding a microphone. Sorry, I don't even know how this works, but can, we're gonna 
What we're going to do is we're going to have a countdown. At the end, we're going to set off some of these streamers. And then we're going to sing, and Chikaz is going to ask some of you to dance. But if you're like me, you won't, but that's fine. And then we will have a great feast and we'll party. Is that okay? Okay, let's go. All right, guys, we're going to count down together. Five seconds. How does, how does this work? Oh, 10 seconds. Oh, All that, right. That's a twist. I can't wait. That that's why. Seven. So slow. Six. six. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Yeah. Happy New Year. <laughs> How does this work? Are you just supposed to do All right. Today, Adrian. Today, Chris. Yeah. Come on, Adrian. We can do this. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Do I have it all over my face? Hey. Is there another one? Another one? Help somebody if they're struggling out there. there must be one, one more. more, one more. Okay, okay, let's go. You can do this, you can do this. Guys, I want us to sing together. Kwa milele, milele, na milele. Kwa shangwe, kwa shangwe, kwa kusifu. Something, whether it's your scarf or an extra coat that you have, I want us to jump and wait for the Lord and celebrate for what He has done, okay? So if you have your scarf or your neighbor has a scarf and they're not using it, take it from them, okay? Come on, grab something that you can, okay? Grab something on you. There we go. All right, all right, all right. At the count of three, I want us to jump and make noise for Jesus. One, two, one, two, three. Hey. We celebrate what he's done. Let's go. Everybody make some noise for Jesus. Freestyle. 
I, I have not prepped for that. I'm exhausted. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to stay around. We're going to have some food. We're going to celebrate. It's going to be games, all kinds of fun. As you heard, if you haven't brought food, just steal someone else's. It's fine. Just help yourselves. That's absolutely part of the deal. But guys, let's stay around. Get to know some people. Let's celebrate. And let's just put our hands together for God as hell once more as we finish. Woo!